Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands. We thank God for this day, but this is the day that the Lord has made, and we come to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm here to welcome you on today to this New Year's Eve service. Come on, clap your hands one more time. I was glad when they said unto me to let us go into the house of the Lord, for knowing this is the day that the Lord has made, and we come to rejoice. We come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Yes, God. He has not brought us some of the way, but he's brought us all the way. I know you might feel like most of us that we had some trials and some tribulations on this year. We've been through some things that we didn't know we are going to make it. We have lost some loved ones. Someone lost their mother, their father. Someone's son has died. Someone's daughter has died. But thank me unto God who gives us the victory to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We come to celebrate on tonight. We come to give God the praise for what's due unto him. I don't know about you, and I don't know about you, but I come to bless him. I come to I come to worship him. I come to honor him. I come to adore him. I come to magnify him. I come to lift him up. I come to worship him. I come to give him all the praise and do unto him. He's worthy from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. God has brought us all the way. He's given us another chance. After we messed that one up, he gave us another one. Another chance to give God the praise. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! This is the day. I tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited in my spirit for what the Lord has to come. I know, I know we had hard times. I know we had trials and tribulations. But God has allowed us to remain to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, we owe God praise. We all got a hallelujah. We all got to thank you, Jesus. We all got that. There was no goodness of our own. But because of his grace and his mercy, he allowed us to see another day. Yes, yes. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. I come in the mighty name of Jesus saying that he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the lifter of my head. And he is the keeper of my soul. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble will hear them and be glad. And then it says, oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, be my faith. Don't leave me out here by myself. Oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, has God been good to anybody? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exhort his name. For the Lord, he's good. And he's worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but I got a praise down in my feet. I got a spirit in my soul where I can't keep it to myself. But you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He's been good to me. He's been kind to me. He's been merciful. He's given me another chance and another opportunity to give his name to praise. I will bless his name. I will honor him and adore him. I will serve him for the rest of my life. I know this is the year people make New Year resolutions and they make these vows, but I'm determined to live for God. I'm determined to serve him. I'm determined to let him use me that he get the glory out of my life. It's not about you. It's not about what you think or what you say. But what God has for me is for me. I will not be ashamed of the gospel. I will walk boldly. I will hold my head high. I will tell how I made it over. I will tell what he's done for me. Don't know like I know. Everybody has a story to be told. 
and every opportunity, every chance I get, I will speak well of him. I will speak kind of him. I will tell of his goodness. I will show his mercy, for his mercy endures forever. Come on, clap your hands one more time. This is a celebration. We come to celebrate tonight. We come to lift him up. We come to shout out to God with a voice. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. My Savior and my God. Yes. I don't know about you and you and you and you. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will bless his name. I tell you, 2020 has brought some hard times, has brought some headaches and brought some tears, has brought some pain and brought some sorrows. But God said, we've been made and door for a night. But how many know that joy will come in the morning? He said, I'll give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He said, I lift up every hung down head and he will wipe every dry eye. So I'm determined, I will. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't lift up a praise and tell the Lord, thank you for his grace and his mercy endures for all generations. Come on now, I come to worship him. I come to praise him. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. He said to enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and to bless his name. Come on, the Lord, he is good. The Lord is good, and he's worthy to be praised. Again, we thank God for this 2020, for going out, for coming in with the victory. He said, he who the sun set free is free indeed. He said, if you be still, he said that he will fight your battle and that the victory belongs to you. So I learned to walk still. I learned to keep my mouth shut and let God fight my battle. Cause he said that the victory belongs to mine. He said that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. He said that in the name of Jesus that he will supply all my needs. In the mighty name of Jesus. I tell you this 2020 has taught me some things. It has brought me back to some things where I know that if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I know that if it had not been God had, had your protection around me, if it had not been God walking beside me, if it had not been God being with me, if it had not been God ordering my steps, if it had not been God showing me the way, I would be lost the most miserable one. But because of his grace and his mercy, he seen fit to let little old me to come to serve him and to bless him. If I walk aright, he said in his word that he will continue to be with me. And I tell you, I will serve. I have a mind of determination. My mind is made up and my heart is fixed. I have no doubt in my mind who holds my tomorrow. I have no doubt in my mind that who's going to continue to bring me through. Who's going to continue to order my steps? He said, the steps of a good man, a good woman, are ordered by the Lord. The word of the Lord said that my sheep know my voice, and the stranger there will not follow. And I hear him. I learn to obey him. I learn to seek him. I learn to listen to him. I learn to honor him. I learn to turn everything over to God because he is a problem solver. He's a trouble fixer, a heart maker, and a mind regulator. God is well able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. I tell you, I got a praise in my feet. I don't know about you, but I am a worshiper and a praiser. And I know every morning that the Lord wakes me up, I owe God a praise. I owe God a hallelujah. I owe God a thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, you and you, but the God that I serve is well able. He can do anything but fail. My Savior and my God. I didn't come to play no games on tonight, but I come to bless him. I come to lift him up. I come to glorify him and to magnify him. I come to give him what's due unto him. He's worthy to be praised. My Savior and my God. Come on, clap your hands one more time. This is 2020. We're going out and going into 2021. And I want you to know that God has some amazing things in store for you. 
God has a plan for you. God has a vision for you. God has opened doors that you have not seen. God has made ways for you. He's already parted the people that you need to be separated from. He's already closed the doors that need to be closed. He's already opened doors for you that need to be opened. I'm telling you, if you could just continue to focus on God. He said, if you keep your mind stayed on thee, that he would keep you in perfect peace. I want you to be encouraged to know that you know that you know that this year, there's victory on the other side. That this year, those things that you've been praying about, this year, those things that you've been worried about, this year, our husbands, our wives, our children, this year, this is the year we're declaring that God is going to make everything all right. Come on, if you believe it, clap your hands again one more time. At this time, we're going to have our prayer and our scripture by our very well-capable elder, Janet Clayton. Come on, clap your hands as she comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give honor to God on this evening, and we praise God for the opportunity to stand before you. And I'm going to ask that you join me in a word of prayer, but I am going to say this before I pray. The Lord used Sister Tamika Vincent last Sunday with a statement that has resonated with me. And I'm going to drop it again so that when people say praise the Lord, you know, it's not perfunctory. It's not something that we just do out of habit. But the Lord used her to say, if that's the best you can do, I'll leave you alone. But my God, I know I owe God so much more than what I give him. And even what I give him could never repay him for what he's done to me and for me. Let's pray. Father God Almighty, we thank you and we praise you that as we stand at the end of this year, a year that we've never experienced and things we've never experienced before, we thank you because we are still in awe of your power and that is displayed throughout the entire universe. God, for through you all things were made and all things have their being. We come before you with grateful hearts, thanking you, loving you, adoring you, worshiping you, praising you because of your goodness, because of your faithfulness. Now, Father, we invite you to have your way in us, through us, in this service. Do what you will do, God. Help us, God, to be alert to your call, sensitive to your voice, and ready to move at your call in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we commit this service to your hands. We thank you for doing the new thing that you always do. Thank you for the still that you've given us all this year. Thank you for the still that you've given us all this year because it gives us hope. It gives us faith. And we thank you for a bright future in Jesus' name. And everyone that agrees with that prayer says amen. For our scripture, I'd like you to notice with me 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 17. Hallelujah. And as we stand on the precipice of a new year, I want to read this scripture in your hearing. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I've read in your hearing 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, from verse 17 to its conclusion at verse 21, God's word is already blessed. Amen. Come on, clap your hands again one more time for the prayer and the scripture. 
God's word is yea and amen. So we thank God for another chance, another opportunity to be able to hear what thus the Lord is saying. At this time, we're getting ready for our praise and worship team. And we're going to ask them to come at this time to lift us up a little higher in the spirit that they may sing Zion songs unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name, hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing and give him glory because he, though this has been a challenging year, God does not change. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says in Psalms, I will bless the Lord at all times, uh -huh. for his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. There is nothing that could have happened in this year that would take the praises of God out of my mouth. Uh -huh. So I bless him. I give him the fruit of my lips. Yeah. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, yes, Lord. And I sing praises to his most holy name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Lord. Yes, God. We're going to praise his name. Yeah. 
Come on, one more time. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. 
in a Jesus. It's a privilege to sing. It's a privilege to give him glory. It's a privilege to worship him. Worthy, worthy, 
I'm so glad that I know you're worthy. You're worthy. I love you because you're worthy. Yeah. I love you. 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 I you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You gave me one more day to praise you. Yes, yes. You're worthy, worthy. I love you. That's my testimony. I love you. I love you. I love you. This is my new song. I love you. I love you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says when it says sing a new song. Hallelujah. Do you know he will download a song into your soul? He'll download a testimony. He'll give you words. He'll give you worship. Freely receive from him and freely give to him. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're going to tell you about his goodness. Hallelujah. Is that anybody's testimony? Do you know that he's good? Do you know that even through this, he's still good? Still. Still. And make it personal. He's so good to me. He's so good to me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to lift that worship to the Lord. so good to me. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Even if I try. My Lord, my Lord. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Doors. 
that was on my side. I don't know where I'll be, but the Lord gave me another chance to come into the house of the Lord and to lift up his name, to give God the praise in this pandemic where people have died, where people didn't make it, but somebody not able to come to the house of the Lord, but somebody not closing their right mind. Somebody don't have peace in their heart. Somebody don't have the joy of the Lord in their heart. My God, thanks be unto God that you've given us the victory to triumph over the enemy. Yeah, come on, I'm encouraged on tonight. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, right where you are, if you're in the living room, wherever you are, you got a right to give God the praise. You got a right to tell the Lord, thank you. You got a right to say yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, I will obey. Yes, God, you are the keeper. Yes, Lord, you are my healer. Yes, Lord, you are our Lord. You're my doctor, oh God. You're my way maker. You're my provider. working in your favor. You got to already know that it's happening for you, that you have the favor of God upon your life. It don't matter what you've been through because you're still here. It don't matter what they said about you because you're still here. It don't matter how they look at you because you're still here. Because what God has for you is for you. Everything that the enemy meant for evil, God said he's turning around and he's making it for our good and that there be glory. My Savior, there will be glory after this. I'm a living witness. Hey, that I can see the glory on the other side. I'm a living witness that the victory is waiting for me when I get over there. I'm a living witness to know that he's going to make every crooked road straight. I believe God. His word is yea and amen. And if God said it, that settles it. That's what it is. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Give God the praise for another year. Not just another opportunity, another, but another year. God has kept us in our right mind. God has kept us, kept a roof over our head. God has kept us with clothes on our back, with food on our table, with shoes on our feet. God has kept us from hurt, harm, and danger. God has kept us from seeing and not seeing danger. God has kept us from when the enemy said it was canceled. God has kept us because he dropped the charge. When the enemy tried to come in and take us away, God dropped the charge. And that's why I got a right. You got a right. You got a right. We all got a right. They don't know my like you. That's it. Give God some praise. You got a right to give God some praise.
don't take anything for granted. Because it could have been us outdoors with no food to eat, with no clothes on our back. It could have been us sleeping in our car. It could have been us wandering around in the street at night trying to find something to eat. It could have been us when we couldn't get help when we needed. And then people that could have helped us wouldn't help us. It could have been us lost in the wilderness, lost out of our mind, locked up in a mental institution. It could have been us that didn't make it out. And you tell me the new year, I'm not going to give God praise. I'm not going to bless his name. I'm not going to tell how worthy he is and that he's glorious, that he's wonderful, that he's marvelous, that he is my king, that he's my shepherd. You mean to tell me I ain't got a right? I will bless the Lord at all times in his praises. Time won't even permit for me to give you a piece of my testimony. But look at me. I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like anything that I saw that I had to go under with. But God is good. God is a keeper. He's a healer. He's a way maker. He's a deliverer. He is the lifter of my head and the keeper of my soul. My Savior and my God. Come on, clap your hands one more time. And at this time, we're going to go to our giving and then we will have our announcements by our giving sister Corinne and then our announcements by sister elder Cesar Ellison at that time. Come on, clap your hands as they come. Good evening. Can, can y'all hear me? Okay. Um, there are three ways to give. There's Cash App at dollar sign SMUFWB Church, PayPal, www.paypal.me slash SM Church Offering, Sunday Service Mail or Drop Off, St. Matthew's UFWB Church, Roger Dixwell Avenue, New Haven, Connecticut, 06511 or debit or credit are accepted, you have to call either trustee Eric O'Brien or trustee Juanita Mazik. And thank you for your time. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are excited to announce 2021 is finally here. Hallelujah. We give God the praise and the glory that we are here to make announcements and declarations. This announcement will be a little different today. I want to stand and announce to you, 2021 will be the year of abundance. I want to stand here and announce that 2021 will be the year of alignment. I want to stand here and announce that 2021 will be the year of awareness. I just want to stand and announce that 2021 will be the year of balance. I just want to stand here and announce to someone tonight that the year of 2021 will be the year of better. I want to decree and declare that the word of the Lord is giving us the blessing in 2021. I'm just here to stand and announce that 2021 will be the year to celebrate. I want to announce to someone tonight that the year of 21 will be the year of change. I want to announce to someone tonight that the year of 2021 will be the year of creativity. I want to stand and announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of confidence. I want to stand and announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of devotion. I want to stand and announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of delight. I want to stand and announce 
that the year of 2021 is the year to dream. I want to stand and announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of boldness. I want to make the declaration that the year of 2021 will be the year of empowerment. I want to declare that the year of 2021 will be the year of hope. I want to announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of joy. I want to stand and announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of restoration. I want to stand and announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of renewal. I want to stand and announce that the year of 2021 will be the year to sparkle. I want to announce that the year of 2021 will be the year to shine again. I want to announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of peace and permission. I want to announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of progress. I want to announce that the year of 2021 will be the year of release, of reset, of restructure, and restoration. Now, if you believe the announcement for 2021, I dare you right where you are to give God praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank the Lord for the announcement of 2021. God bless you. Amen. Come on, this is the year to celebrate. This is the year when the things are going to start happening, when we're going to start decreeing and declaring. Know that God is well able. We come to celebrate the things that God has in store for us on this year. This is the year that things are going to happen. This is the year God is opening doors. This is the year God is going to decree and declare that we will make it. We won't have to live what was done yesterday will not happen this today. That yesterday's are gone, but tomorrow is here on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Savior, my God. We thank God. We thank God for those announcements. I'm excited again for what God is doing. God said he's turning things around. That it won't always be like this. But he's perfecting those things that are concerning us. And sooner or later, it's going to turn in our favor. My Savior. Yes. He's turning things around for me and for you. Sooner or later, when you turn around, you're going to know that the presence of the Lord is for you. And he's right there walking beside you. And he's right there standing in front of you. Sooner or later, hey, my Savior, he are not our Savior. My God, he's turning it around. Come on, put your hand on yourself. He's turning it around for me. He's working those things out for me. Those situations that I can't handle. Those things I can't talk about. Those things that I can't share with nobody else. The things that nobody don't know about. Hospital. I'm not gonna get started because I'm my savior. My 
My soul shall make her boast. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now, 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 there, that's it. You will magnify the Lord with me. Because God done something for you also. God opened some doors for you too. God made some ways for you too. God kept you from seeing and unseen danger too. God provided for you. God opened some doors for you. God made something for you. God kept your job. God kept finances for you. God kept your life. Why you got breath in your body? to be praised. Y'all only got to act like you want to give God praise. We can go another round. My Savior. My Savior. Yeah, God, he's worthy. Hey, God. My da 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 Hey. Worthy to be praised. I'm my mouth. 2020 to 2021. <laughs> he gave us one more chance. When I think about where he's brought me from and to where I know where I'm going to. Hey, God. My Savior. Come on. Yes, God. I want y'all to continue to stay in the flow because we have a, another gift to the body of Christ who allows the Lord to use her that she sees from her soul that she don't mind lifting up a praise unto God and she knows how to change the atmosphere in her voice. And after Sister Maria Davis comes, we have a great gift from God. A man that can preach, that will preach. A man that declares the word of the Lord. A man that knows that he is his alpha and the omega. That he is the beginning and the end. That he is his first and his last. A man that will preach and teach, that will demonstrate, that don't have no shame to know that God is the author and the finisher of his feet. He is the lifter of his head, and he knows that he is the keeper of his soul. Because if it had not been for the Lord that was on his side, I'm not missing. If it had not been for the Lord, God has favored him in this season. God has opened doors for him. God has made ways for him. God made the road easy. And even when the enemy said no, God said yes. Because what God has for you is for you. Can no devil in hell take it from you. God will make every crooked road straight. And he will see that the work will get done. He was chosen by God. No other than my brother, my friend, my pastor, Pastor Kevin C. Hardy. Clap your hands, all you people. At this time, friends, we're going to have our psalmist, Sister Marie Davis, and then our pastor, our leader, our king, our shepherd, our, the prince of this house, Pastor Kevin C. Hardy. Come on. Hallelujah. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him. He's worthy. I don't know about you, but I'm happy about what 2021 is going to bring. This has been a tough year, but God is still good. He is still mighty. He is still making a way, and I believe him. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord.
for every mountain that you brought me over, Lord. I say hallelujah. And for this, I give you praise. The Spirit of the Lord is here and he's been here. Let us lift our hands in his presence. Father, we come with grateful hearts and we acknowledge that you have been our help. You have been our keeper. You have been a protector. You have been our counselor. You have been just what Isaiah said. You've been a mighty God, a wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace. You have been all that and much more to us and we give you the praise. And as we gather on this New Year's Eve, God, we thank you that we can still tell you thank you. We still know our name, and most of all, we still know your name. And it's that name that we give praise. Now that we're at the preaching moment, oh God, I thank you for allowing me to preach your word with clarity, conviction, and with power. And although much has been said and done, we thank you that we saved room for the word of God. And we thank you that he that hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. And we go into 2021 with your word, hallelujah, which you will accomplish. And we will not be hearers only, but doers of your word in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for allowing us to gather this New Year's Eve, December 31st, and as the older saints would call it, watch night service. But there is a word from the Lord. I want to thank everyone that so kindly was a part. Elder Sims, our worship leader, Elder Clayton, the vessels of praise, the portion that represented during praise and worship, Sister Maria Davis, Elder Ellison for those 2021 announcements, Sister Corinne Hardy for the giving, the professor brother, William Stefan Hawkins playing and singing for us, brother Jay Hardy on the drums, we have Sister Lynette Robinson working in the back. Sister Penny working technically for us. Brother Tyrone working technically for us. And all those that are gathered here and that are gathered in your home, which tonight is the sanctuary of the living God. Hallelujah. He said, I'll be where you are. Hallelujah. Let us go to the word of the Lord. Let us go to Luke 17. It is a familiar passage of scripture to some and to others. We're going to introduce you to it. Luke 17 verses 11 through 19. And when you find it, it reads as such. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, arise, go your way. Your faith 
has made you well. Hallelujah. This evening, I want to lift from the subject. I will be the one. I will be the one. Put your hand on yourself this New Year's Eve and say, I will be the one. One of the things that I appreciate about many cultures is the practice of affirmations. When they say I am or I will statements, they reinforce who we are and what we will be. It sets the groundwork for keeping the right mindset and for achieving goals. It can also improve our thinking and guide our responses and our behavior. These powerful statements are personal and powerful. So tonight I declare to you and I'll share it with you. I bet you, you should take it for yourself when you say I will be the one. I'll be the one to give God thanks before 2020 comes to a close. I will give God thanks. This text here in Luke 17 is familiar to some, but provides information and inspiration why we can personally declare that I will be the one. In the beginning verses, verses 11 and 12, Jesus is traveling and is in the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And it makes two important points I wanna share. Sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of two places and only Jesus can find us. Sometimes we're in the middle of hurt and loneliness. We're in the middle of fear and grief. We're in the middle of stress and anxiety. We're in the middle of anger and sadness. We're in the middle of depression and frustration. We're in the midst, in the middle of being tired and weary. We're in the middle of hope and heartbreak. We're in the middle of being a Christian and trying to cope. Have you ever been there? We're in the middle of faith and waiting for the manifestation. But Jesus can find me even when I'm in the middle of something, in the middle of my emotions, in the midst of something. He knows just where I am hallelujah and when he's in the midst he can change it for me that's why we're so glad that this is not a churchy phrase when we say that he is in the midst of us but whenever Jesus spirit is in the midst he comes to change something because you don't understand what I'm in the middle of but even when I'm in the middle of two emotions in the middle of two situations Jesus comes in the midst and he can find me oh people may not be able to find they may not even be able to pinpoint the location and being able to diagnose it but Jesus not only can find me he can diagnose it and he can heal me that's why I'll be the one to give him thanks he chooses not to be a bystander once he finds me. Now, there are some people that might find you on the side of the road and they choose to drive on by. They choose to walk on by. They choose to be a bystander. They won't even call anybody for you. But when Jesus finds you, He's actively engaged. He's not just here. So here that word midst doesn't just mean he's hanging out. It means he's moving in the midst. See, Jesus can't just be in a place and not move. When he's in the midst, he moves in the midst of his people. That's how we know Jesus' spirit is here and is moving in the midst of where we are. So when it says that he was in the midst of them, with Samaria and Galilee, it means he was moving. He did not stop moving. I got a news flash for everybody that God is still moving. He is moving in the midst of you, in the midst of your finances, in the midst of your family, in the midst of your mind, in the midst of your body. He is moving in the midst. And he met 10 men who stood afar off and he extends himself even when I am afar off, glory be to God. He pushes past my own personal barriers. See, they stood afar off because 
they were ashamed. Sometimes the biggest barrier is not Jesus, it's our own shame. The enemy uses guilt and shame to keep us far away because we feel like we don't have a right to him. But he demonstrates here that he comes to us by choice. He intercedes for us by choice. He doesn't judge us by where we are or what we're in the midst of, but he pushes past our barriers of shame and guilt. Sometimes it's our own mindset doing what we want to do that we just are not ready we just want to have fun but he pushes past all of that and he still meets us where we are on that road he chooses to meet us there even when we try to stand afar off but I need to make an announcement sometimes I was standing afar off but other times I wandered off but whether I wandered or whether I was standing afar off, he still came for me. I was never out of his sight. And even better, I was never out of his heart. I know that God was there for me. He was never, I was never out of his mind, never out of his sight, never out of his heart, never out of his plan, never out of his purpose. I may have wandered off, but in his mind, I was steadfast. In his mind, I was there because he is consistent in his faithfulness, consistent in his love, consistent in what he purposed for me, even when I'm silly enough not to be. He doesn't let me decide what's best for me. He knows, the Bible says he knows the way I should take. So whether it's a wandering off or standing off, he met me. God meets me where no one else can find me. God meets you. The scripture calls it in verses 11 and 12, that certain place. Have you ever been in a certain place where nobody else could really find you? You couldn't even find yourself. But in that certain place, Jesus still has the ability to find you. And what finds you first is his mercy. I know when Lady Hardy was talking about mercy, I said, Lord, you're just confirming what you told me in the message. Verse 13 says, Jesus, master, have mercy on me. Mercy met me in that certain place. I just got to testify to you and let you know the certain place that I was in in my 20s, the certain place I might have been in in my 30s or 40s or now my 50s, whatever certain place you're in, Jesus' mercy meets you. God knows just where that certain place is, and he didn't let my cries go unheard. And for mercy's sake, I need to let you know that your process will produce. For mercy's sake, your process will produce. The mercy of God is working in your life. How do you know? Because it said when they said, Jesus, master, have mercy on me. It said that he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were healed. So what that means is the mercy of God is what is working to make your process produce. You think it's your own effort. You think it's your own knowledge. You think it's your own wherewithal, your own determination. But it is the mercy of God. The mercy will allow you to walk out the word you heard. I thank God for mercy because sometimes I want to walk it out. But what empowers me to walk it out is the mercy of God allows me to walk out the word that I heard. Once they heard him say, go show yourself to the priest, mercy motivated them. Mercy was the motivation that got them to walking. So I need to let you know you got to walk it out steadily. Walk it out carefully. Walk it out step by step. Don't be discouraged that you're not leaping forward. As long as you're walking forward, walk that joker out. Walk it out because let the mercy of God motivate you. The mercy is there to help me walk it out. How do I know? Go to scripture and I never connected these before. But what does Psalm 23 say? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So what is pushing me forward? Goodness and mercy is helping me walk out what God said. And he said in prayer, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and grace in the time of need. What is keeping me walking and not consumed? It is because of the Lord's mercies 
that I'm not consumed. The world may be running on Duncan, but I'm running on mercy. The world can run on Duncan. I'm running on mercy. It is the mercy of God that is faithful. He is rich in mercy and decided to tell me it's part of my inheritance. You know, rich people can give you an inheritance. The inheritance of mercy is mine. It is keeping me walking and running and pursuing into 2021. What's kept you running in the midst of a pandemic? Mercy has. What kept you from losing your mind? Mercy did. What kept you hoping when doors were shut, when things were shutting down? Mercy did. What kept a hallelujah in your mouth? When the enemy wanted to shut it, mercy kept my mouth open and kept the praise in my mouth. What kept you connected when other things were being cut off? The mercy of God, which said that he keeps his covenant to a thousand generations. Mercy kept me running. Mercy kept me talking. Mercy kept me positive. When they said they had no cure, when they said I couldn't keep myself, what kept me was the mercy of God that said he'll give his angels charge over me. As you're going, it says, and as they went, they were healed. There is something ahead of you. There is something ahead of you in 2021. And you want to know what's ahead of you? Healing. He said, as they went, they were healed. So healing is ahead of me. Put your hand on yourself and say, healing is ahead of me. And mercy is pushing me. Mercy is pushing me, but healing is ahead of me. But you got to keep going. That's why he sent me here tonight, because I'm going to be the one that keeps on going, because I know that healing is ahead of me. I will be the one because God can work it. Oh, my Lord. God can work it. Mercy is at its greatest when the need is greater than the resources. Mercy is at its greatest when the need is greater than the resources. These lepers saw things changing in their routine. They couldn't relate to people. They had to announce their problem. Aren't you glad that we're not living in a time that we come into the church and we got to announce what's our problem? We got to come in and let them know what we're dealing with and what we went through. Thank God we don't have to announce what the issue is. But these lepers had a great need. They couldn't relate to people as they wanted. Their routines had changed. They saw things falling apart before their very eyes. Their freedom was limited. Their relationships were altered. Sound familiar? COVID-19, coronavirus, everything had gotten altered and they could not change it for themselves. The only thing that they could do was depend on the Lord's mercy. How many times this year have you said after watching the news, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. That's the only thing because you realize that your resources were limited, but your need was great. When there's a big problem and little resources, you call for mercy because you understand that God can work it. And it's the call that creates the change. It's the call that sets the change in motion. What they said was, Jesus, master, have mercy. That's why no matter what the problem is, we can't stop calling. Because it is the call that sets the change in motion. You want to know why the enemy is fighting so hard so that you won't call God, so that you won't praise God, so that you won't call on the name of the Lord? Because he understands that your call sets forth the chain, just like the match to the switch. 
So don't let the enemy blow that match out. I know the only breath you need is the breath of God that is inside of you. Don't let him try to blow out the breath that God is putting you because God can work it. So I have some good news for some people that have a big need and little resources because the mercy of God is set in motion for you. All you have to do is not forget that your call sets the change in motion. The text shows me that God can work it. I get stressed sometimes because I feel like I don't have enough or have everything that I need to make things change. I want to change it for myself. I want to make it different for myself. But these people had leprosy and limitations. Sometimes there's an issue, but they have limitations, but he's the God who can work it. How do I know? Let me go through his resume. He's the one that had 5,000 hungry and just two fish and five loaves of bread, but God can work it. He's the one who had a a woman with a 14 year issue and all he had was some threads at the end of his garment, but God can work it. He's the one who said that I know there's a mountain in your life that needs to be moved, but he's the one who said, I gave you a mustard seed. And if you use the mustard seed, I'll work it. I'll make the mountain go into the sea. He's the one who said at the wedding, they said, I got jugs of water, but wine is needed. He's the one that said, bring it to me anyhow. And I'll change it in the midst. He's the one who had a blind man, but all he had was saliva and dirt, but he made mud and he knows how to work it. Who can make better mud pies than the Lord? His have healing power in it because even his saliva heals the nations. He's the one who could take an old rugged cross in himself and be my propitiation. He's the one who could come and cause redemption from an old rugged cross in himself. He's the one who could take blood and his name and make the devil in hell back up. Because when I call his name, when I plead the blood, all hell begins to tremble because he can work it. And then he told me because he can work it, I can work it. I dare you to give him praise because he can work it. The songwriter said he can work it out. 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 Jesus can work it out. Jesus can work it out. Whatever the problem, God can solve it. Jesus can work it out. I got an announcement before I go into 2021. Jesus can work it out. He's my heart fixer. He's my mind regulator. He's my heart fixer. He's the lifter of my head. He can heal my family. He can heal my body. Jesus can work it out. What's coming is better. Jesus can work it out, 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 work it out. Whatever the problem, God can solve it. Why am I still here? Because Jesus worked it out. He stuck closer than a brother. I didn't break. There might have been some cracks, but he put me back together. Jesus worked it out. I might have cried some tears, but why can't I persevere? Because Jesus worked it out, work it out. Why am I going to be the one? Why am I going to be the one? Because Jesus worked it out. I couldn't figure it out, but Jesus worked it out. And this is the hope 
that we, we have in him that if we ask anything according to his name it shall be done they that come to the Lord must believe that he is God and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him is there anything too hard for me saith the Lord watch me work it out watch me work it out watch me work it out watch me heal you watch me strengthen you watch me remove those things watch me dry your eyes watch me make your enemies your footstool watch me make it good it out. He worked 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 it out. it out. Don't you stop speaking in faith. Jesus is working it out. As they went, they saw it. As they worshiped, they saw it. As they kept going, they saw it. Don't you stop. Don't you stop. Don't get tired in the crossover. Let him do it. Work it out. Work it out. Oh, work it out. Work it out. Work it out. Oh, work it out. Work, 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 work it out. Work it out. They saw it, and then there was one who turned back and said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't help but turn around when you remember where your help came from. You can't help but go back to God when you remember that he is the one who stopped something that you thought would be unending. He's the one who gives an answer to a problem you can't solve. So why won't I be the one when he was the one? He was the one who answered my call. He was the one who healed my body. He's the one who gave me hope. He's the one that kept me running. He's the one who kept my faith going. He's the one. So they turned back. Let me, let me give you this, this last little bit here. My, my, my. That's a fresh download. That Jesus will work it out. It's not even in my notes. That's a fresh download. We take that word into 2021. That Jesus oh, has worked it out. No devil in hell could stop it. No devil in hell could turn it. No devil in hell could be the barrier. But God said when the enemy came in like a flood, he lifted. Work it out. I want to leave you with this last little bit. As we get down to the end of the text, it said there was one who returned to say thank you. It got personal. Whenever it begins to get personal, 
and you remember your journey. And you remember your journey. You can't help but remember the one who remembered you. <laughs> you can't help but remember the one who remembered you. So as I get ready to cross over to 2021, you got to give me some moments to come back and tell God thank you. Because I remember the one who remembered me in the midst of a pandemic, who remembered me when the problem was much too big. And he said, praise me. Go back and thank me. Because he said, praise has got to always be part of my procedure. The nine kept going. And sometimes we are the nine, but tonight we will be the one. Sometimes we're the nine because we're so busy enjoying that we forget about thanking. Those people, but what I love about God and his mercy is even when I was busy enjoying and big on the enjoying and short on the thanking, he didn't take it back. It didn't say anywhere in the text that he took back their healing. But he said, I thank God for the one because praise has got to be part of my procedure. So I know we got an order of service. I know we had some things written down, but that's why praise was in order tonight. Because praise, there's no way that I could get through January and get through February and get through March and get through April and get through May and get through June and get through July and get through August and get through September and get through October and get to November and get to the last night of December and not give God a praise. I will be the one because only I know that he knows what I've been through and praise is a part of my procedure. How do I know? Because the Bible says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. 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 Lord is good. And his mercy, there's some good news. And his mercy, there's some good news. And his mercy endure forever. You want more? Let everything that have breath be the one. Let everything that have breath be the one that tells him thank you. Let everything that have breath be the one. Let everything that have breath be the one. Let the redeemed one because he redeemed you be the one because he saved you be the one because he kept you be the one because he healed you
as we cross over, as we cross over, I need to tell you what the text told me. Oh, my shot have I said. What the text told me, the text says that praise is the gateway for greater. Praise is the gateway for greater. Well, how do you know? Because verse 19 said that the man who came back was not only healed, but he was made whole. I'm not going to stop at being made healed when God wants me to be made whole. So praise is the gateway, it's the doorway, it's the pathway, and it belongs to me. Praise is the gateway for greater, and I will be the one that gives an intentional praise to an intentional God. Give him the fruit of your lips. Give him the sacrifice of praise. What? 
you ought to let your feet testify where your mouth can't speak. You ought to let your feet testify what your mouth can't speak. I declare that your ladder will be greater and what's coming is better. Oh, my, my, my. What's coming is better than what was because he can work it out. He can work it out. Joel says, and I will restore unto you, yes God, I will restore unto you I will restore unto you that which the canker worm those are the pesky things getting in your crop but God said I will restore unto you so I say to you what the prophet Joel said and what was repeated in Acts 2, that I will restore unto you. And in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. Lift your hands right where you are. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. I'm going to paraphrase and put it this way. In 2021, I will pour out my spirit. Your sons and your daughters, they'll dream dreams, they'll prophesy. But I'm going to pour out their spirit so they have a comfort. I'm going to pour out their spirit so that they feel empowered. I'm going to pour out my spirit so that they can be my witnesses. I'm going to pour out my spirit so that they have a comforter, they have a guide. They have a keeper. So I speak that, that your ladder will be greater. Don't get weary in the crossover when the children of Israel were coming through the Red Sea. They didn't let them get stuck in the middle. Don't get stuck in the middle of your crossover. Walk all the way through one step at a time. Walk all the way through. Walk all the way through. The Bible says that God kept the doorway open till they all passed through. You won't be left, my sister. You won't be left, my brother. It was open till they all went through. You think I won't be the one when he opened doors that no man could shut? He brought me over. He brought me over. I'm going to ask if Brother Hawkins could just sing something lightly for us. We're going to just take a few minutes in worship. We praised him, but we want to worship him for the crossover. With uplifted hands as we worship him. And then I want to invite people to salvation and to join this church. That's it, right where you are in your home, lift your hands. You made it. You made it. I know there were some times you thought you wouldn't make it. Brother Stefan, only because, only because you made a way. I, I'm standing here because he made a way. Made a way. In your own home sanctuary, when lift your hands. 
God made a way. That's how I'm in 2021. God made a way with my limited resources and my big need. God worked it out. The best decision you could make on this side of 2021 is to give your heart to Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I ask that you would repeat this prayer with me. Dear God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. You said in your word, if I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead, I would be saved. I believe it. I believe it. And I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Here's the good part. I am now saved. Thank you for forgiving me and loving me. We will walk this Christian journey together. Amen. If that was you when you gave your heart to Jesus, there's going to be a number that you can call. There's going to be an email that you can do. Or you can just put your name right in the chat right there on Zoom. It's just that easy. And maybe you're already a believer in Jesus Christ, but you don't have a church home. This is the best decision you could make. Unite with this church. All you got to do is put your name in the chat. Or again, you can email me or call me. So if you gave your heart to Jesus or want to join this church, put your name in the chat or email me at PastorHardy400 at iCloud.com or call me at 203-584-0579. That's right, you can call me. 203-584-0579. And I'm standing here only because you made. We want to thank you for joining us for Watch Night, New Year's Eve 2020. And now we're on the other side. Hallelujah. And thanks be to God. I'm clapping my hands. I'm shouting hallelujah. I'm giving God glory on the other side of what I thought I wouldn't come through. And we're going to ask if Lady Hardy will just come and give us our blessing and our closing prayer. I love you. We love you. And we thank God for you. And I declare and I speak to you. Continue to be the one. God honors your praise.
and we thank you that you're that pillar of fire that goes before us and lights the way, oh God. And we are determined that we will keep our eyes on you in 2021. And Father, we believe that as we keep our eyes on you, we will be led to our various purposes, oh God. That's our destination, our purpose in you. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we lift up our hands declaring that your peace will keep us, your blood will cover us, your wisdom will instruct us. And, God, if we continue to call upon your name, we will be found in you always on the side of right. So we thank you and we bless you for your keeping power. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you all so much.